Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to um, another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing uh, okay. Um, I logged off a little early today. Yesterday I woke up, um, for all you guys on the live webinar, you obviously know that my whole family has been fighting the flu. Um, I thought I evaded it yesterday. Uh, I woke up like well, you know, all messed up and today it kind of hit me again. So now I'm on Advil. I'm hoping to God I could just sweat it out today. So I logged off a little bit early today. So I got some rest. So I'm hoping, you know, hoping I could sweat it all out and be 100% for tomorrow uh, session. So uh, let's talk about the day. I, I, I want to, uh, the Bulls did a great job. Absolutely great job. So if you go back to last Thursday, kind of just a rewind, we were setting up um, for probably one of the more bullish sessions uh, that I can remember for Friday. And then that news came out about, you know, uh, the whole Iran thing and, you know, killing the general and this, that, the other thing and possible retaliation. And the market gapped down a lot, right? Gapped down a lot on Friday. And to the bull's credit, um, they fought back. Okay. They fought back. Uh, and Friday was a really, really good day. It turned out to be a pretty good day. Uh, Tesla was super duper aggressive on Friday. Apple was aggressive. Uh, Facebook, I had an overnight in Facebook. Um, that did, did, did well, uh, did well overall in the trade. Um, so Friday turned out great. The, the, the only problem was going over the weekend were two things. We had um, the unknown, right? We had the unknown of any type of news coming out uh, of Iran or even or even here domestically. So we didn't know what was going to happen, and we got another gap down. Now the difference between Friday's gap down and today's gap down was well, we wanted to see if there had any type of legs for any selling. Again, the market just doesn't need really any excuse uh, to get to get a back test, right? We had such a big linear run for the last year or so that anything, anything tangible could be a good excuse for the market to come in. So we wanted to see today if the bulls could, you know, could stake, could hold their ground. And why, why was today different than Friday? Friday, still people are still on vacation. Okay, people were still uh, celebrating the holiday, Christmas, and Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa, and New Year, and everything in between. Today, more people started trickling back from vacation. We kind of represented uh, a better feel of the market, more volume, uh, more market participants. So it was very, very important. So when we saw the Dow, you know, down 150 points, again, we wanted to make sure that we had. Uh, plays to the upside, we had plays to the downside, because again, we, we, we're we not in a position to guess, okay? We, we can't be in a position to guess what's going to happen next. We need to see price action confirm everything. And I, I have to say, this was pretty damn good. You saw it today. I mean, you, you saw it even before the Dow went green in the day. And it was a really good reversal from down 150 to being up uh, 80 or so. But before that even happened, you saw how aggressive Apple became. You saw uh, how aggressive Facebook became, and then Roku. You know, we'll talk about all these pivots and Netflix and Shop. We saw all this happening, this big swing happening. And I even tweeted this out around, you know, around lunchtime. I said, unless you know, unless we really, really, you know, just completely give everything back, any close like this. When I said like this, we were still down like 60, 70 handles. And I said, any close like this. I think we're going to run. We're going to run. You know, we run tomorrow. And again, one of the one of the most really high probability, right? High probability uh, setups we talk about is this kind of inverted hammer. Yesterday, a uh, Friday, we had this inverted hammer, right? We had this inverted hammer, which was bearish, and we opened up down 150 points. But if to to all again, just I can't emphasize how important it is. The bulls negated this inverted hammer on one gap down. That's it. It didn't, we didn't go down all the way down to the rise in support of the Qs. They negated the Qs. They neg literally, the bulls negated the bear attempt uh, of a back test, macro back test into the rising support on one candle, literally on one candle. And not only did we reclaim the 10 day that, that pierced and the five day, um, and the five day that uh, was pierced on Friday, we reclaimed Friday's highs, which is incredibly, incredibly bullish. And now we are um, now we are at the point where we were, right? If you guys remember where we were on Friday, 
with Roku about to break out and Amazon. We'll talk about Amazon in a second. Again, unless uh, unless a freaking missile hits the earth, okay, unless the mis a missile hits the earth, I have to assume Amazon's going to rip. I have to assume. If you look at the daily chart on Amazon, this is the setup we were talking about last, th you know, last Thursday into Friday, right? Unless something really materialistic that comes out, either the stock gets downgraded uh, or uh, a, a meteor hits the earth and we all die, there's nothing to suggest Amazon should not have at least not start a multi-day run. What's going to happen to earnings? We have no idea. But again, perfect close is the first close, highest close in this whole formation above 1900. Again, we'll talk about uh, the, specific, the specifics of it in a second. But you have to like what you saw here. I mean, really, really like what you saw here today uh, with everything. If you trade beta, Tesla, again, very, very strong. Roke, I mean, look at these candles. I mean, these candles are just really aggressive candles. You had Roku just going nuts. So 139 is a big spot. We'll talk about that as that. Uh, Netflix, reclaim the 27, reclaim the 330. I mean, these are all areas of interest that we were watching last week, right? Here's the 27. All the 27 supply was the five day. Here was the 330, right? Here's the 330 that reclaimed again. And now tomorrow, you know, we're staring at a, a run to that uh, 338 level was the recent highs uh, from December the 20th. And I, again, I'd love to get a little bit of a, you know, a, a light washout open so we could buy these things at cheaper prices. Uh, but again, I think this thing will test this 338 and then just maybe explode. Uh, Roku looks great. I mean, Roku first closed over the 50 day moving average. Last time it closed uh, over the 50 day moving average, it ran, you know, ran about 11 points. So you can see how important everything is. Uh, Facebook continues to be incredibly strong, choppy, but strong. Okay. Choppy, but very strong. It took out the 209. We had a nice trade on it. Um, Wednesday into Thursday and my last runner, uh, I got stopped out up, up a dollar and change before it took off again. But again, you know, look, look at it. This is the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, NVIDIA is starting to wake up here again, held this rise in support. All it needs to do is confirm this channel here. Uh, Apple continues to be an absolute monster. And you can just see it on and on and on. So again, technically, if again, that's, I mean, certain things, there's no, there's no reason for rumor interpretation. Unless something materialistically happens, uh, geopolitical, um, world starts, you know, we start a war overnight uh, or some multiple downgrades in the whole tech space, we should get pretty good, aggressive uh, upside bias continuation tomorrow. Again, to be determined, you know, there's no, there's no guarantees. But again, if you have a, you know, if you have a, a point, if you have an opinion, every, every trader should have an opinion going into the next trading day. Uh, it's all about, it's all about technical analysis. And this is the highest level. A lot of these names are closed in this whole channel. So uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see, said the blind man, but overall uh, it looks good. I know a lot of you guys are long, uh, are long uh, Amazon from this morning, from this eight, from the 1894 pivot. And now that it closed above 1900, and a lot of guys are long calls. Uh, Netflix looks like a beast. Uh, Tesla looks like, again, wants to test tomorrow. Uh, the all-time highs of uh, 454. So again, we are definitely uh, setting up for a, a premium day. One, the one interesting name, um, the one interesting name um, that we've been watching now for for a couple of days. Th there's been a, an, an unusual buyer um, of this week's uh, of the weekly calls. Um, they started, I think it was last Thursday or Friday. Somebody started buying. I'm, I'm assuming it's the same person. They started buying 500 lots of uh, the weekly 79 calls. Ironically, the stock can't go higher. For some reason, it's just not going higher. It att it's attempts to go higher, and then they knock it back down. So somebody looks like, and they, again, they started some buying some calls again today. Uh, same strike, uh, same strike, uh, same expiration. This Friday's expiration. So somebody it looks like somebody looks like somebody is betting that a PR is coming again. There's no way possibly known, but it's something. Uh, that I did find interesting over the last uh, couple of days. Um, again, just again, pretty, pretty again, solid action. I mean, really, really solid action, uh, even from like last night's watch list. And again, you, you don't need, you know, you don't need to trade beta. Again, the, the, you know, these stocks right here have nothing to do with beta. CPLP, uh, you know, CPLCP and Maxar and all these stocks, but you know, the rest of them do, right? Roku, uh, VRSK, Workday, you know, so we, we try to give somebody, something to everybody because, again, everybody understands you cannot, if you have a smaller account, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar account, it's going to be very hard for you to constantly trade Amazon. So you need something uh, more that you could sink your teeth into. And again, at the end of the day, 
It doesn't make a difference if you are trading a $2,000 stock or a $2 stock, as long as it has range, as long as, long as it has volume, real volume, um, you should have a, a validation for a confirmation channel, just like everything else. And if you look, you know, if you look at the day, you know, it actually turned out to be a pretty good day. Um, you know, CPLP, you know, CPLP, just off the way, just to give you an idea, just off the watch list, what we uh, put on here, CPLP, that 1390, uh, 14 area, you know, nice little spike starting to go up. I think we sees 1450 tomorrow. Uh, Regi didn't make it uh, work. A nice spike here, uh, 169. Uh, confirmed 169, uh, put in a move to like 70 and a half. I still like it. I still think there's one more push probably to the 72 area. Um, let's see here. Uh, VRSK just triggered at the close. Verisign, nice move on Verisign. Uh, 201.50, 202 needs to reclaim. Uh, here is Verisign, right? Here's Verisign, uh, 201.50, 202. Uh, went to nearly 203. I still like it. I think if it confirms today's prices, um, I think Verisign goes higher tomorrow. Uh, Maxer, just is, is sitting right at this breakout level. This was definitely the biggest trade of the day. I mean, this is by far the biggest move. Roku, actually this and Netflix, but, and CRWD. Uh, but let's start it out. Let's start it out. Uh, here's the pivots. Uh, CRWD 52 needs to build for more strength. And again, here is the pivot on CRWD, right? Here's the pivot on CRWD. And it was right over here, right over here. Here's the high of 52. Once it reclaimed 52, just a big, big move went all the way up to 55. So big move there. Uh, Verisign, we just talked about, uh, reclaimed 201.50, 202, went to 203. Uh, Regi didn't confirm anything. Maxer uh, didn't control, control anything. And then I started I started putting shorts, okay? I started putting shorts uh, into the channel just in case, right? And again, before Tesla exploded, again, it's not about being right where the stock's gonna close. We're looking for this downside channel. And I said, hey, listen, if Tesla starts confirming this downside channel, right? Forget about what it did after. It's not the point here. We're looking for the downside channel, and it couldn't crack it. It couldn't crack it, and finally just took off. But here was, you know, here, here was kind of my my play to the other side of the market in case we pulled, uh, and obviously never get there. So obviously tomorrow Tesla looks like it wants to run to 52-week highs. And CPLP we talked about. Netflix obviously never got to 322, but it was a really good pivot. At 327, uh, that 327, I forgot to put it into the Twitter feed. Uh, we obviously did it in the live webinar. Uh, actually, I think I even put it on stock twits, if I recall. I think I did. Um, but yeah, Roku was a you know big move here. 139 needs to build. I thought it was going to get to 43. I even said there's a punch a shot at 43. It bypassed 43 like it was nothing, right? It bypassed 43 and went to almost 45. So big, big move. Here's the 39 channel, right? Here's the 139 channel, just absolutely exploded. Uh, big move there. Uh, take on the way up, huge move, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Amazon needs to reclaim 1901, and then did right on the close. Uh, Amazon uh, reclaimed 1901 on the close. Why is that important? That was the high from last week. If you are looking at uh, the weekly chart on Amazon, you can see where your next measure potential could be, roughly around the 1950 level. So I obviously uh, still like it going forward. Crowd, obviously a huge move. Uh, again, here's I was just battling with the flu, and I still am. Uh, but you can see, again, Bulls did a great, great job setting up great value, and that's exactly what we're getting tomorrow in beta. Again, you don't need to uh, to be very creative. Again, uh, big, 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 big move on Roku. Again, I tweet this out. 39 needs to build if you can go uh, up, you know, up five. I mean, big move there. Uh, Netflix, same thing. You know, Netflix, same thing. If it reclaims 27, builds can wake up hard and. Yeah, that's what I said, right? For all you Office fans, uh, you know, big move there, uh, obviously as well, and uh, crowd, you know, nearly a three dollar move as well. So, big moves, some some really really big moves. Uh, and the moral of the story is again, you know, we we're, we're not set up on one side of the market. We're set up on both sides. That's why I always put uh, longs. I always put shorts. And the most important thing is we 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 don't we're not smart enough, intelligent enough to figure out which way they're going to confirm. The most important part is that we're prepared for one side of the market. Uh, or another. So um, I'm bullish. I mean, I'm definitely bullish uh, for tomorrow. Again, unless something crazy happens. But again, dips have been bought now uh, two consecutive days, which is very, very bullish. Uh, so let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow's session to see uh, what we like. Uh, you know, what we like. So I, I like Verisign. Uh, I still like Verisign. Uh, looks really, really good. Again, confirmed today, broke out today. 
Um, I think if it reclaims that 203 level, there's a shot in the next couple of days to 206, 208. That looks good. Uh, TTD. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.